everyone. Welcome back again to another exciting episode of the Iconist Podcast. As usual, I'm one of your co-hosts for this show, and it's Barry 3D. Hey, 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 hey. And on my side, as always, the man, the myth, the legend. If you're dancing, then he's playing. Right? Who am I talking about? The one and only DJ Rod C. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another episode. We got something for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Before we get into all of that, you know the deal. Manners make it the man. We got to go down the round table. So let's get down to it. Get on down. Here's a get down on it. Dun, dun, dun. Get down on it. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, have You're right. Right. moments. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm oh, okay, cool. Cool. So first and foremost, remember this is the Johannes yeah. podcast. Uh, thank you for remember like, subscribe, and share. Don't let the show be a secret. If you want to mm-hmm. find thing that I'm doing, because on top of this show, I do stand-up comedy. You can go to my website. That is barry3d.com. You can find where I'm going to be at. Promote, support me live, support the show. Anything is appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, also, I'm doing shows with another group of guys. As you know, that's a touch of gray matter, which is myself, Dave Sekolowski, and Zol Fowley. Come and check us out when we get some live shows going. we got some things in the word works. So uh, hopefully sooner than later, we'll see you out there. And uh, of course, I got a show out in Cambridge. So for any of our fans or friends out in Cambridge, please come out support the show. You'll see myself with Thomas Patrice and Quincy Martin. Um, you know, it's a show from at six o'clock. Uh, it's a Saturday. It's it's March tenth. There we go. Please show out. Let's show out. It's good. It's gonna be Hampton's B Day Bash Comedy Bash. There we go. Uh, see the poster. On top of that, um, mm. I'm all, we're also part of the uh, Subculture Podcast Network. Take for a listen. Check out the other shows that are on that network channel. It's us plus of five other shows. All go to you know nerd culture a hundred percent. And of course, since we talk about comics, we want us to maybe start a comic book collection. Please go and check out our friends out in Kitchener and tell Wes and the guys that we said hi over at Wild Comics. For the fans and friends over in Cambridge, go and check out a Hero's Tale. Tell Andrew and the guys we said hi. And for our friends and friends in Montreal, please reach out to Check Swings. Tell Trevor and the rest of the guys we said hello. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right? Right? You know, got to do it. Got to do it. Rod, my man. Yes, sir. Where can we find you? As I always say, you can find me on the World Wide Web. You can find me on Instagram and Mr. Rod C. You can have that ask, access to me. You can, you know, find me all over. Uh, you can also find me on the world of Twitch, twitch.tv at DJ Rod C. But you know what? If you're not familiar with that one, that's okay. I know you're familiar with the TikTok. You can find me on the TikTok at TikTok DJ. No, what is it? TikTok.com forward slash DJ Rod C1. That's DJ Rod C1. Okay then. All right. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Right. Those have to battle. Of G. course. Joe. And another friend of the show, Mr. Larry Reclizado. You can check out his uh page, Forgotten, Obscure, and Underrated Heroes. It's a Facebook page. You got to make sure answer the questions, be polite. It's all about a great fun chat. So definitely check us out. We're on there too. You'll see us commenting and posting our stuff uh as there as reminders. Mm. And we're also on Podbean. That's what we use for our pod. So we're on YouTube and we're on Podbean. So if you want to check it out, you too can start a podcast and get your voice out there with the thousands of others. And you go to podbean.com. You'll find us at iconis.podbean.com. All right. And on hmm. that note, last but not hmm. least, if you're looking to start your own podcast, your own show, or anything you've got going on and you need a graphic artist worldwide, there's only one and one man that you should be going to, and that is J Bird Digital Art, 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 art. Mr. Jason Reese, J Bird Digital Arts. You hook him up, tell him you heard about him on the Iconist podcast, and he'll give you a discount on the work. Yeah, I know I can't sing, but I'm singing anyways. Why? Because we have a podcast and we can do whatever we want. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> do what you like. Mm. Okay. Okay, brings us down to today's episode on the Iconist podcast. The icon is Madam Web. Madam Web. Hmm. Wow, wow. Now we had to do this character because one, it's a character we wanted to do for a while. Two, the movie came out. 
And I, we see other people talking about it. We're like, hey, this is something we wanted to do. And here we are wanting to be first on it, but now we're kind of last to it. So we're getting to it right now because <laughs> why? Because we've got a podcast. <laughs> and this is what you all tune in to find out. So we are going to be talking about Madam Web and we're going to be talking about the comic book origins, the comic book story trajectory of Madam Web. Yep. We'll maybe yep. touch on the movie for what <laughs> I know, because I'll be honest, um, I haven't seen it yet. But, uh, we'll go with what we think it could have been and how it could have been a bigger player than maybe what it's done. All yeah. right. All right. So first and foremost, Madam hmm. Web. This character made her debut in The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 210210 back in November of 1980. What? She didn't have shoulder pads? Yeah. A lot of mercy. <laughs> the 80s were kicking. The character was created by uh, Danny O'Neill and John Romeda Jr. Wow, yes, that John Romeda Jr. Okay, okay, okay. Danny O'Neill, okay. I see that. And when she came about, uh, her name was Cassandra Webb. And that was her name. Her, her, you know, Sandra Webb, spelt with two Bs. And she started going with the moniker Madam Webb. Now, first and foremost, she is a older character, right? She's not a young teeny bopper. She's not 20 something. She is a older woman. She was always portrayed that way. And she mm -hmm. was a paraplegic uh, or, you know, or, or paralyzed, or, you know, how she was. So uh, we'll get into that. So when she made her first debut in issue number zero, I said Amazing Spider-Man 210, um, Madam Web is a clairvoyant and a precognitive mutant. Pretty much, she can see things and the future. So futures. Oh. At first appeared in Spider-Man that issue to help Spider-Man find a kidnapped victim. Um, but she's And the thing is, she's a mutant. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, Spider-Man's trying to find a person and then uh, gets called in and roped in by her and said, hey, Spider-Man can help you. So keep in mind, police do use psychics to help them find clues. And when it comes to cold cases or cases that are really tough and have come to a dead end, they have turned to psychics before to kind of get them back on the right path. Even if you believe or not, this is what happens and it's for the greater good. That's the way it's supposed to be. So she comes in there. Uh, and, and that's what her storyline was about. So keep in mind, Madam Webb, uh, she's a, an older woman. She wears a long, like, burgundy robe that's over her feet yep. with uh, a spider emblem in white around her chest area. There we go. And then she has her eyes closed off. So she, you're not sure if she's, when you see her, is she blind or not? Her eyes are closed off. So it's almost like uh, Destiny. Destiny, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, about to say right? Destiny, yep. From the X-Men, mm -hmm. you know, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. You got Mystique, you got Destiny. There we go. So she always has a mask that covers her face. You never see your eyes. Destiny is blind, but because of her abilities, it's like Daredevil. She sees better than us. And I wear glasses. Mm. I'm wearing them today, but there we go. And this is how she comes about. So she makes her appearance in that one. Um, the, the most memorable moment for me is later on is where Juggernaut shows up. There's an issue um, of Spider-Man. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. I'll put it up. And, you know, Spider-Man is literally fighting Juggernaut. Juggernaut's just walking through a building. And Madam Web is asking Spider-Man to help out stop uh, a certain uh, situation. And mm -hmm. when he gets in there to stop it, sure enough, the Juggernaut's there. And he, him and the Juggernaut go in a one-on-one -on -one through New York City. And he's just fighting and trying to keep Madam Web alive. So that's another piece I'll say is Madam Webb, when you get into her apartment, she's wired in. So she's sitting on this big cushion thing, and these wires all look like webs, but these bring to her vital fluids, keep her bodily functions going, and keeping her alive, mm -hmm. basically. That, but the rest of her, she's an enigma. She's a mystery. We don't know what happened. We just see her at this thing. There's no buildup to how she got there. All right, so that's that's pretty much Madam Web in a nutshell. So this is a character. I'm surprised they did a movie, but this is the character they they went with. And I've got theories. So Rod, what is what is? Oh, does she? And you know, depending on it. So she's a you know clairvoyance, precognitive, mm -hmm. and she has telepathy. You know, and she's very intelligent. She's got a gifted intelligence, right? So these are things that have come on down the line. Rod, what, what do you think? And what was your first feel? You know, memory thoughts of Madam Web, comic book character. So definitely that particular issue, yeah, definitely remembering that, you know, helping out Spider-Man in the early days of Spider-Man. 
another another place you know a lot of people do remember her is from the animated spider-man tv show and that's during the um yeah their early version of the spider-verse type of scenario um that's another more prominent um recollection of madame webb but definitely yeah she's being the she's having the ability of you know she's being clairvoyant you know so it gives that mystique that again she is blind she, her eyes are covered. We're given the impression that she's blind, but she can see, quote unquote, see you very well. She has the ability to be projecting and she's um, able to project herself in astral form. So have the ability to say to talk to multiple peoples in an astral in an astral plane. So that's another part of her abilities, part of her, her functionality as well. She's always been a very interesting individual. And to me, she was the uh I'm, like a, a, a seasoning to the Spider-Man lore, to the mm -hmm. Spider-Man universe. Good to have, good to know that she's there, but her, you know, just having her there was great. I always wonder, you, you brought it, I was gonna say along the same line, like when they said they're having a movie, okay, we'll get into that. But I was like, interesting. We don't, you know, there's not a lot per se that she does outside of having those particular abilities. She comes in as a as an advisor, as a person who basically, if there's a problem or there's a situation, Spider-Man, the person you're looking for is over here, gives him type of riddles, type of conversation just to make him think. She's never always that direct, if I remember correctly. She was never that type of when you're in a conversation with her, never that di that direct. So I'm like, okay, what are we get, what are we getting from her to make a movie? But we'll get into that. But outside of that, I found her being a great add-on to the Spider-Man lore, to the Spider-Man yes. universe. For me, that was great. So we're gonna talk some more about her. What else? What are you? You know, and, and this is what it is. So when when I first about well, the movie, I was like, I was weird. But let's get back to the character. So here's the character. So the mm -hmm. character is said she's got her abilities. She's a mutant. Uh, she's older. So as I said, yes. So she's paralyzed. She's blind. She's telepathic, clairvoyant, precognitive mutant. Um, mm -hmm. And she's working as a professional medium. So this is how she makes her money. He was stricken with, and forgive my pronunciation, uh, misthenia graves. Like it's a disease, right? It's a neuromuscular junction disease. That leads to varying degrees of skeletal, skeletal, skeletal muscular Muscle. weakness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was the, what is stricken her. So, I mean, you know, every hero always has to have a weak, a weakness to some degree. That's how they always wrote it. Or else it should be like uber strong. All right. right. Got that. I was cool with that. So they brought in the first one where she had to help with the kidnapping, where the person that was doing the kidnapping um, was, you know, who was reporting the kidnapping was actually the kidnapper and was faking it. Right. That was a uh, KG uh, Clayton. So she was actually impersonating this. So that was a whole story where she comes about. The second one, the one I really enjoyed was nothing can stop the juggernaut. Right. And with that was issue 229 and 230 of the amazing Spider-Man. That cover was just imposing. You got Spider-Man holding, you know, uh, Rubble holding Madam Web. She looks like she's dying. Juggernaut's there in the background, but it's just like a, a shadow of him, you know, with the words, nothing can stop the Juggernaut. So mm -hmm. in that story arc, Black Tom Cassie realizes uh, Cassandra's powers, how they might be beneficial because he's a pure mercenary, right? So Black Tom, so, you know, Black Tom Cassidy turns around, who is the cousin of Banshee from the X-Men. But he works with Juggernaut, right? Who's the stepbrother of Charles Xavier to say, hey, go and kidnap her. Let's get a clairvoyant person on our side to help mm -hmm. us with schemes and plans that we want to do so we can pull these off more successfully. So he sends the Juggernaut and literally the Juggernaut just walks over. Wherever the base was, he walks under sea, walks up on shore. Walks through Manhattan, and if you want to know about the Juggernaut, you got to go back to our our, our season one episode, uh, year one, I should say. We talked about the Juggernaut. You know, shout out that is Sean's favorite episode. So there we go. And he gets there, and and then she calls Spider Man because she realizes with her visions that you know Black Tom Cassidy wants to kidnap her, and he sent the Juggernaut. Literally, nothing stops Juggernaut. Spider Man gets there, does his best, and 
And at one point, you know, the juggernaut pulls her out of her chair. But as we said before, that is what's keeping her alive. Juggernaut is yep. not aware of this, that disconnecting her from her chair is causing her bodily functions to shut down one by one. So Spider-Man is a race against time to not just beat Juggernaut, but to save Madam Web, connect her to her chair, try to keep property damage down <laughs> with the Juggernaut. Good luck. And, and you know, still be the hero for everything. Mm-hmm. There. Two issues. Awesome read. Awesome read. Love those two. To your point, yes, she did show up in the Amazing Spider-Man cartoon, you know, and they kind of did their own secret version of, you know, Secret Wars with Spider-Man, and she was a, a, a main part in that. And I thought that was really interesting. So here we are. She's, you know, in a Marvel universe, if you play the role-playing game, you have altered humans, which is what Spider-Man would be, because he was bitten by a radioactive spider and he got his powers externally. So in the books, he's classified, you know, if you've had to play the role-playing game, he's classified as an altered human. And he's helping out a mutant because she is a mutant. So I don't know if the plans were to test her that way and try to bring her into the mutant world with the X-Men because she's never really participated. Even though she was a mutant, she never got into mutant affairs. Right. Okay. And here here we go with that. So uh, when I heard about the movie, I'm like, okay, how are we going to do this? Because no. Oh, I see Madam Web. So, I and, mean, and we're not going to dance around it. Let's talk about it. I, have I seen the movie? No, I'll be honest. No, I haven't. Uh, right. Did I have any interest of seeing the movie? And Rod gave me some crap on this one. Uh, no, I didn't. And I know this is a comic book show. But, you know, as fans, <laughs> there's times there's things you want to see and things that you're like, okay. And I'm, I'm, and as you all can tell, I'm pretty much an open-minded person. I'm an, I'm an easy critic at times. People are going to say, oh, you know, like comic book guy from the Simpsons, hated it. Oh, I'll watch it. I'll enjoy it. I'll be along for the ride if you can really entice me. Mm-hmm. This one I put in the category of black. Uh, no, sorry, uh, Catwoman. Not yeah, Catwoman with Halle Berry. Right? I saw the poster. Mm-hmm. I was good. The the Catwoman Halle Berry one. Not a knock on the actress. It's just how they did it. How they put it in there. It was separated from the. Batman universe, so to speak. It, the best thing about that, I think I watched five minutes of that movie and I'm like, no, I'm good. I, I was good. I was good. As a, as a young man, I, the poster was the poster was the best thing that came out of that movie. Halle Berry and ripped leather pants and a bra and a crisscross whip. All right, then. All right. Here we go. Here and we that go. was it. That was, it. that was it. That's all I needed. <laughs> A lot of mercy. All right, there we go. So, uh, I, yeah, I know, I know. So this is where, yeah. So when I saw the movie come out and I see who they casted for Madame Web, this was way. Did I watch Morbius? Yes, I did. Did I enjoy Mor- Morbius? Yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. I, I see what Sony, you know, Sony, you know, it's got their method about how they go about things. And I think how other studios like Marvel Studios has a plan I feel sometimes, you know, Sony is just going to grab whatever it is, throw it to the wall and see what sticks. That's my feeling about it. This is something right. that did not stick. All right, there we go. Rod, what, what was your uh, take about this? So, you know what? I, I, again, I, I was the same way. I, I haven't rushed to watch it yet. Eventually, I'm right. going to watch it. Uh, I haven't rushed to watch it yet. Because, again, it didn't really pull me in. Because my mindset was... At least with any type of character, any type of movie, we don't know what the ending is going to be, you know, but at least you have an idea. Okay, there's a chance there's going to be some type of story. They're going to be able to create some type of arc that's going to be interesting and try to pull you in. As I said, Madam Web, to me, was she's part of the Spider-Man lore, the Marvel, Marvel Universe lore, but she's like seasoning. She's she, she good to have. She's good to have as a part of a... a, a someone else's arc yes but her by herself as an arc i couldn't really see what were you going to do with madam webb to say you can pull me in for the length of time i'm not even gonna right. have a number of the length of time whatever the case would be so seeing at the movie yeah we have three three young ladies who is part of this mystique of what's happening and someone is hunting them down okay great to me 
Again, I haven't watched it, but just those footers to me is like, I think you could have taken her out of the equation, left the main nemesis at him, basically, because really what it is, is just like a hunting, Craven the Hunter type of storyline. The, you know, the alleged bad guy or the individual is hunting these these other individuals. Storyline is very straight, straight cut and dry. But I just couldn't see what her part was really in all in all of it. So it never intrigued me to watch it. But eventually I will watch it because, like I was telling Barry, that not only you know, we're comic guys and you know we we want to be part of the the you know the world of giving our our suggestion our opinions on all these movies, but we got to at least watch it to have an opinion. So good or bad, did we lose? You know, am I going to lose how many hours of my life? I don't know. And that's just be honest. I'll just be honest with that. Yeah, yeah. But I want to see and just see, okay, what were they trying to do? Barry said a good point with Mobius. You can see what they're trying to do. Didn't didn't, you know, land, you know, didn't hit, you know, what is, what's the saying? They didn't they didn't they didn't get the landing. Yeah, or, they didn't or stick the landing. They didn't stick the thank you, stick the landing. They didn't stick the landing. But you see what they're trying to do. I now have to watch it to see what were they're trying to do. But yeah, one day. We'll have we'll have a conversation on that. We'll we'll do another one. We'll actually watch it. We'll Barry and I will figure out a time. We're gonna watch it, and then we can do a proper review. But I all that yes. to say, all that to say is, I think you know, I think it 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 could have. No, I, I I I'm honestly I'm here really trying to be nice. I'm not trying to be nice, but I'm just being honest. I don't know what the movie could be about. I'm so confused on on that sense. But hey. They put something together. It yeah. to me it could be a buildup, and it could be mm -hmm. one of those things that, again, what Sony was trying to do, where they're trying to lead and build into something else, could be that. I, I have to see. Is it more pertaining to pertaining to the three the three young ladies that's in it? Are we building to some type of um, spin off with them? Could be, but introduce it with Madam Web. I'm, I got, I got to see. I know it just sounds like I'm just going around in circles, but it really and truly, I'm really trying to figure out what, what would their, what would their goal, what was their whole mission, what would they're trying to accomplish to pull us in. So mm -hmm. I got to watch it at, at some point, but yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but her herself, her herself is great, but I don't know if I could see it for. I, I just couldn't see what they could have done for a full <sighs> length of time. That's I got maybe. theories. You I got, got a theory. I got a okay. theory. Here we go. Okay, throw, so, go. Go throw it out. Let's see. All right. So here we go. So first and foremost, as I said, we know that um, we ha I haven't watched the movie. Granted, I haven't watched the movie. I know they brought in other spider women in there who are existing characters within the Marvel universe, right? I know right. that uh, Julie Carpenter is in there. She's a spider woman or, uh, you know, and she wears a black costume who was supposed to be a little bit older, I guess, or maybe around the same age, and she gets caught, you know, you see her first appearance in, if I got it right, in Secret Wars. She's the Spider-Woman that you see in the Secret Wars maxi-series that takes place on another planet with a Beyonder and all that. Okay, right. got it. Right. right. And so so here's, here's how I would go about it, right? First and foremost, well, let's not turn this into a CW version of what they did with Gotham Knights. No, we step away from that. Let's keep Madam Web as Madam Web. She doesn't need to be a 20-something-year-old woman. Right. She needs to be yeah. comic yeah. accurate, yeah. older woman. Give her yeah. the disabilities. Give her all of that. You need an actress that's going to be able to hold that character and keep that interest in there and use that as motivation. Now, to touch on it a little bit. I, I, I'll say this. They brought in the, the villain. So we all know that the villain in the Madam Web movie or what we see in the sequel, uh, the trailers and everything is Ezekiel. So Ezekiel right. Zeke Sims. Right. right. He's an older gentleman. Has very similar powers peter parker he's just older mm. he got his powers you know through a ritual that he did he didn't get bitten by a radioactive spider but that his storyline when he comes into it so um you know he made his first appearance in the amazing spider-man of you know uh issue number 33 uh in july of 2001 right and, mm -hmm. and he was created by john michael straczynski and once again, John Rometta Jr. So John Rometta Jr. was behind creating Ezekiel and behind creating Madam Web. Okay, keep Ezekiel in what I'm going to say. 
Let Ezekiel okay. still take on that bad guy role. So how it comes in is Ezekiel comes in there and he starts talking when he makes his appearance, he starts talking to Peter Parker, like Peter sees him. So he's an older gentleman. He mm-hmm. wears a black suit, no tie. So it's a suit of class. He's barefoot, no hands, and he's able to run up walls, has similar powers to Spider-Man. And when Peter Parker, as Spider-Man sees him, it's like, who are you? Why do you have spider powers? Like, And Peter has so many questions. So Ezekiel starts to train him on this whole thing. And Ezekiel does show up in Spider-Man Across the Universe. He plays the spider therapist, right? In that, you know, Miles Morales movie. So okay. anyways, I'm going okay. with the original one. So let's go. Madam Webb, older woman, comic accurate. Ezekiel, older gentleman, make him comic accurate. Ezekiel's whole purpose is he is explaining to Peter Parker that aren't you wondering about your powers and the villains you fight? He goes, what do you mean? He goes, you're Spider-Man. You're fighting the rhino, the lizard, Mm. the vulture. These are the guys that you end up fighting mostly. Green Goblin, right? These are all either monsters or creatures of lore or animals that existed and people use them. Pretty much, your powers are totem-based. If you look in the grander scheme of things, Uh you are taking on that totem. So it was a mystical aspect that he was bringing in and he was talking about. Okay. Okay. So keep everyone the way they are. And that's all the way I visioned a movie. Uh Bring in maybe one potential character, a spider woman. And we've covered spider woman on our show before. Yep. The original one, you're at Jessica Drew. All right. Right. Uh, the very the first Spider Woman. So bring her in. I think that's all you would need, but bring her in in a smaller role as a mentorship. Bring her in. Maybe it could have been a Spider Woman movie with these two, Madam Web on one side, Ezekiel on the other side. They're like the little, you know, good side and bad side of your conscience trying to train her and say, hey, by the way, do you not? So, anyways, but the original story is he's talking about Spider Man. We know we don't have Spider Man in there, but Spider Man is within the Sony universe. My whole thing is, let's go back to that whole totem thing. Let's talk about Anansi, who's the spider god that we see in Africa. If you watch those, the the TV show, uh, uh, was it American Gods? Mm. Anansi is in there, played by. Oh my gosh, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say I call the wrong guy there, uh, Orlando, Orlando Jones. Okay. Yeah, so he's played by Orlando Jones, right? I'm not saying use that actor, but I'm just saying Anansi comes in American Gods. Whatever. So I know I'm going all over the place, but bear with me. It makes sense. So instead of Spider-Man just being radioactive spider, it's tight, bang, boom, classic comic book thing. Now we're getting another layer of the heroes, the villains that he fights because they're all totem based. Therefore, it's showing that gods are somewhat influencing people because every god wants to have an avatar on Earth to represent them. No, okay. see, the spider god is the trickster god. So Ezekiel is trying to First, he sees Spider-Man in the comic books, and he's like, oh, wow, I have a successful business. I used, I didn't really use my powers to make people's lives better. He gets jealous of Peter Parker using his powers to be a hero, where he has the same powers, and he didn't do that. He just built up his business. And right. when he sees how Peter uses his powers, he gets jealous. So he starts to kind of train Peter, wants to open Peter up to being you know, the spider god. You're the, you're the avatar for the spider god, so to speak. Takes Peter over, uh, I can't remember if it was like Cuba, Peru, or something like that, to go looking for this lost temple. It's almost like an Indiana Jones feel kind to it. To okay. find out at the end that Ezekiel just wanted to get to the temple, and he needed to sacrifice the avatar to get, like, eternal mm. life. Okay? Okay. So that's that's the, that's basically the, the story is in the comic book. I don't know if that's what it is in the movie, but that's his overall goal is to get eternal life or get young again, whatever. And to do it, he has to sacrifice someone with a similar power to do it. You got to sacrifice the avatar to get the avatars, you know, the God's blessing, yada, yada, yada. Madam, this is where Madam Webb comes in with her ability. She, instead of it making it, she could be a mutant. But maybe she deals with a little bit of mysticism at the same time. Maybe not to the level of Doctor Strange, but maybe she's aware of this whole totem. She's done research. I mean, she's home. She's got powers. 
certain things might pop up. Even if it's, if it's not even magical, she will still get certain information pop up. She might have like a feeling of, oh, geez, I see this person's trying to bring this God to life. Now, is it a bigger than life story? Absolutely. But this is what comic books are about. And this is Marvel. And she needs to stop him. Now, physically, she can't stop him because she can't leave her apartment. So first of all, I'm not putting her in an apartment. I'm going to make her Madam Web, age appropriate, in a condo. Let her be a successful medium. Let her mm. turn around and make money off of this to pay for her life support, but live in a nice lifestyle, right? So she's living in a high-class condo with high-tech stuff around. Right. And then she's got to deal with Ezekiel at the same time because she's getting flashes of what his plan's going to be. And she needs to have a set of legs. A set of legs, if they want it to be, you're not going to get Peter Parker. I understand that. But you put in Spider-Woman, Give me the first Spider Woman. Let the first Spider Woman come Jessica. in there, Jessica, and let mm -hmm. her try to get to Jessica. So keep in mind, the only way for her to get to Jessica is through telepathy. Yep. But at the same time, Jessica can be at a cafe and you hear a voice in your head. If you're a normal person walking down the street and you hear a voice in your head, the first thing you want to do is check yourself into the hospital. What the what? Yeah. Right. And she's got to say, well, I'm Madam Webb. You don't see those commercials that come on sometimes. Uh, you know your future, whatever. I'm <laughs> Madam Webb. And it's like, I thought you were just a charlatan. I thought you were just fake. And then all of a sudden, in that same cafe, some guy walks in there, sees her, and starts flipping over tables trying to get to her. And she's like, all right, you got to run. Turn left here. Turn right. Jump over this building. Come here. Turn here. All right. It's like, you're at my. You're at the entrance of this door. It's got a key code on it. All right. The numbers are, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Type them in. Open the door. Boop, boop. Close the door behind you, take the elevator, put this code in, come up to my penthouse. I am Madam Webb. I'm Madam Webb. You got to stop Ezekiel. You know, you're still coming into your powers. It could be year one Spider Woman. You're coming into your powers. I'm going to help you. We're going to work together because I have the knowledge. You have the brawn. We need to stop him from, you know, because bottom line is he wants to sacrifice you. Right, and then her, yeah. and Ezekiel's like, "No, no, I'm not trying to sacrifice you. No. Madam Web is the one who's nefarious. I, I, I just want to help you. you. You know what I mean? So play yeah. that moral compass. Is like, how would you do your powers? He's trying to woo her because he needs her to sacrifice. Madam Web needs her to fight. Maybe they don't fully give her all the information, so it makes it look like either one is shady, and she has to make a decision until the the big reveal at the end. And it's a big, of course, classic fight of the new Spider Woman fighting Ezekiel." Mm. Still within the Spider Man universe because it's still part of Sony. Right? That, okay. that to me is the movie. I don't need four Spider Women. I need Madam Web. I need Ezekiel. I need one Spider Woman. Even if you don't want to yep. go with Jessica, you could still go with the other Spider Woman that showed up in the black and white costume in Secret Wars. Because that's, okay. her, that's her, 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 her granddaughter, like a down the road, whatever. So yeah. bring in that Spider Woman. So either or. We're good. We don't need that many players in there. We need three. It could still be billed as a Madam Web movie, and she's maybe training her granddaughter to take on certain roles uh, yeah. to later spin off into her own movie. But that would still be a good way. And then you have Madam Web as that focal point within that universe to help out. Because, hey, guess what? You need to go across the world to chase this guy down? Don't worry about it. I got money. I'll put you on my private plane. You got a private plane? Well, yeah, I got to travel, but I got to travel with all this stuff to keep me alive so it's more right you know getting around right so so no i i like what you're going because you're definitely digging into or you're pulling at least from the original character because as i stated what uh madame webb is the grandmother of the fourth spider woman charlotte witter so we can get into that but at least you're now intertwining that she could actually be a mentor she's a train she's training an up-and-coming spider a person spider woman now yes. you brought a good point in, in regards to making her a medium who, who's a successful medium don't you know who i am i'm i'm miss uh i'm madam wen or aka you know me as my my handle miss cleo oh. shots fired and everybody shots. thinks she's a charlatan and she ain't real but she's actually real in the sense that she's she's actually good her, her predictions and everything is on point. Hence the reason why I have the ability to create an empire that gives me the ability to stay alive, to sustain what I need to, and be able to, like you said, I need, you know, access, private access 
flight access to go wherever I need to go because sometimes I need to make an appearance. But now she realized she's getting too old. And this is where she's starting to basically train her granddaughter or, like you said, either a granddaughter or, or in a sense, uh, Jessica, giving her the understanding, like, listen, you have potential. There's something within you. You just don't know it yet. I can see the future. I see, I see you in your uniform. You got skills. Let's talk. So, yeah, Thank you. I, I, I can go with that. I can go with that. See, that's that's the storyline I would have gone with, right? Because then it keeps it simple. It makes it exciting. And then you establish just how Samuel Jackson was established as Nick Fury to hold the Marvel Cinematic Universe together because 100%. he shows up in each one. We can 100%. now have a focal point in Madam Web to hold the Spider-Verse together for 100%. Sony. Right. 100%. And it goes also back with totems because now you can play a little bit more with the totem aspect and add a, add a little bit of mysticism to it. Mm. So keep in mind, Craven the Hunter, what does he wear? He wears a lion vest. Morbius, he's a vampire. He's a living mm -hmm. vampire. Right. So this gets into that aspect. And I think the writing in itself would have evolved in its own way. Even Venom, even though Venom has the you know symbiote costume, he's a parasite. Okay, okay so he's a parasite in the Spider Universe. So I see it. by the time if Sony really wanted to and said, we want to do our own movie or we want to do a Spider-Man, let's say MCU movie, but guys, we want to do a fully Spider-Man. What are you going to call it? We can do a live action Spider-Man movie, a live action Spider-Verse movie. And because right. Madam Web would be there, then let's say you bring in a Spider-Woman who's working with Madam Web. Peter Parker is not going to know who Madam Web is, but he might hear the exploits of this new Spider Woman, so he's going to be curious who she is. And when he comes right. across her, it's like, oh, well, I work with Madam Web. You mean that charlatan on TV that tells people's futures? Yeah, she comes across that way, but yeah. she's real. She's so real that she makes herself fake, so no one bothers her. But she's real, hundred percent. Right? Like it's like you have a disguise behind a disguise to be the real you. Okay. Right. All right. And and by the way, she's got a budget. And, and we need you. But well, oh, she got oh, a yeah. budget. We, we got a budget because there, that she can help with two storylines. That whole totem storyline, which I thought was a, a great original way to take it and to bring Spider-Man's villains together. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it writes itself. And of course, you can do the whole, hey, here's the Sinister Six. Who's in the Sinister Six? Well, that's Mysterio. Okay. Yep. Uh, Doc Octopus. Oh, wait a minute. Yep. Octopus? Doc Ock? Yep. Okay, that's totem. Raven, totem, Sandman, Sand. Okay, you're the totem of Sand. Sure, why not? Okay, yep. Venom. Vulture. You're the, okay, yep. Parasite. Okay, the, yep. Vulture. Okay, we and we can keep Electro. All right, you're the you're representing electricity. Okay, so they're all there and, and more. There's I know there's more than those who I've mentioned in the Sinister Six. It's always like a revolving door, Green Goblin. Yeah, but you bring in the Sinister Six, and then Madam Web is like Peter. You can't. Peter, you can't fight these characters on your own. I'm sending over some help, and she's going to send over Spider-Woman. And it's like, hey, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, who do we need help? Oh, no, guess what? You know, Morales makes his live MCU appearance, live right. appearance. Send over Miles Morales. Oh, snap. Send over, you know, Spider-Gwen. Oh, snap. Like th These are people that would come over and help Peter Parker. 100%. In, in, within the Spider-World, right? So it's Spider's you find out their spiders totem is somewhat a trickster guardian against these other totems that are trying mm -hmm. to take over for whatever reason okay and if you want to really go for the gusto everything could be said and done and said hey i guess we took care of it this is a hey what hold on what's, who's walking through the town who's walking through the town juggernaut And literally, you can do a cut scene where you have Juggernaut on the street, and he's like, move, you bums. I'm here for Madam Web, right? Yep. And bring in the live appearance of Black Tom Cassidy in front of Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, Miles Morales, all three of them standing there going, you're not um, getting past us. And yeah. then, cut. Cut. Because you know what that tells you? That tells you right away that if Juggernaut's there, who's an altered human, the Black Tom Cassidy is there, who is a mutant and cousin of <sighs> Banshee from the X-Men, right. which means if he's there, 
Banshee exists, which means if mutants are there and mutants are there, mutants exist within the universe. Now, I understand this is Sony, so Sony's got to work with Marvel, but that, you just made another revelation, Easter egg of mutants are there, and you're going to issue, you know, Amazing Spider-Man of 229, 230. Yep. Nothing stops the juggernaut. Now, you don't even have to do an episode. You can just do it as a post credit scene and let it be there and let it sit with our imaginations and then watch, then watch message boards explode on what it could have been. Sony, that was your movie. You had one job, Sony. That was your movie. That was exactly your movie. That that was it. You yeah. you could have started off. You could have had Madam Web, as I said, with Ezekiel and a Spider Woman in there. You could have done a part two where you finally bring in those characters to team up because you don't need five movies, two movies, one to establish. Second movie with Peter in there fighting the Sinister Six. Okay, we're good. Post credit scene, Juggernaut. You know, the casual fan might be like, "Well, why is Juggernaut in here?" Any reader will say, oh, and then issues 229 and 230 go start 230. flying off the shelves. Now, is it yep. different from the storyline? Yes. I'm going with the confines of what they've presented to us in the live action Sony verse and MCU universe and not mm -hmm. the true story. So I understand that. So this is why certain characters will be meeting outside of what the true story is. But there is my, that's my theory on that. And then, you know what? It's a good, it's a good add on because I know I saw a clip where um, they were interview or just having a quick discussion outside. Uh, actually, I believe it was during this movie mm -hmm. producers and Sony side, Sony sides were saying, someone's asking, when is miles coming up? Well, we got two movies before two movies. We're going to work on two movies before we start thinking about introducing miles. So this would be perfect. This would be perfect. This would be perfect. Like you said, you do all this, put these two in, and then you slip in a mild Morales, Morales later on. This this is a good. This would be a good handoff, lateral move, like rugby, lateral move like football. Let's go. Absolutely, and you keep you keep Madam Web in there as the Nick Fury role, right? You keep Madam Web in and it there makes as sense. to bring everybody together when needs be. You know, she makes sense. like she she's like the the Spider Verse version of Charles Xavier. This is who Madam Web should be. They, I, I don't know, you know. So Sony, it's like right now they oh we're gonna do Craven and we're gonna do Morbius and we're gonna do Madam Web and we're but there's there's nothing that's really tying nothing a lot tie of these in. movies together. Yeah. I yeah. watched Morbius and I don't see how Morbius is going to be tying into Craven. Right, you know, you see, I, I don't see how that would tie into a vulture movie. You know, Marvel has it like it's all going to intertwine at one point, so they drop their Easter eggs, and you can always go back and watch them and say, "Ah, got it." Sony is just like we're we're going to do everything else in the Spider Universe because we have the rights for it, and we don't want to lose the rights, so we're just going to make a movie. Well, if you're going to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars, invest it in something that's going to potentially pay off. And the way that would pay off is, in my opinion, first and foremost, you can get a decent movie better than what they got two you're, mm. you're going to increase the comic sales for those books of those first appearances of those important storylines for characters they're going to do a madam web omnibus okay there we go the important moments we have to know about madam web right and all right let's let's go into some toy figures there's no per se madam web statue or toy figure out there that i know of now you're going to get that that's going to increase sales come on sony come on you should have hired us from the iconist podcast to uh turn around and give you an outline for how this movie should have been it's not too we late. We would have got, you know, Jessica Drew in there. Um, we would have got either one of the Spider Women, like the true one of the true Spider Women in there, that would have helped mm -hmm. into this, right? Uh, okay, maybe go back and look at Bart Sears when he was doing Spider Woman, uh, writing and drawing that book at one point. You right. Know, reach back out to John Romero Jr. He's clearly he created both characters, Ezekiel and Madam Web. He's got theories. He may have an idea. He may have an idea. He may be able to put something together. No, but that's that's exactly it. That's not a bad idea because giving giving this layer and this is the scenario like you're saying it's like sony just putting stuff to see what sticks mm -hmm. and what what honestly it just it just hurts me when when i see potential opportunities like this is should be made and mm -hmm. they're just doing it's more like a one off it's like roll the dice let's see if something stick but don't even plan like no, oh, okay, we're gonna do something after. That's why I'm like saying I haven't seen this movie yet. Right. I would like to see what are they trying to stick. What are they trying to pull out of it? Because 
in the interim, it, it's not really giving me anything. And I'm like, uh, I, it's not saying we want, we know we want to, let me put it this way. Mm. I know that all viewers try to mentally forecast what the movie's going to be. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to look into it. And I'm like, okay, it could go here, it can go here, it can go here, it can go here, it can go here, type of scenario, and have their own theory, have their own fine cast, fan cast, and have perfect. But if you're giving, if you're trying to bring something together and no one can really think of, I can't even think past the first hour of this movie? Half hour? Uh, when it finished? Uh, where are we going from here? <sighs> that that's that's it. Like like watching the trailers and just hearing trying to figure out what the storyline is. It's like okay, it just seems so independent, so standalone. It's like it's like this is just an individual standalone movie where you're you're. It's like we're, it's like we're reading on like if someone trying to bake an uh, adaptation of a novel, and you know that book actually has no no trilogy. It has no continuation. I can mm. understand that. Mm. You said it before. Source material, you know. There's I thought there's some type of connection somewhere. Why you're not giving? Why you're not giving that? You may have that plan. May have that plan. Maybe. I have to but what you, but right off the right off the bat, people should be able to sit, look at that, and already mentally like, wow. If you're bringing Madam Web in, we know the scenario with with, with um, Spider Man, so we know that most likely won't happen. Fine. There gotta be something else. Someone else should be saying like this, should be able to think, you know what, let's make some type type of connection. Let's create some type of multiverse idea out of here and go from there. Right. Look, I kind of thought you want to I'm gonna even go a half a step deeper. You know so, You're already here. You're already, I'm already here. here. I'm here. Go on. So so you know, the Ezekiel is going to find this temple. He explains the whole totem thing, how totems are where they're behind, you know, giving okay. the people their powers. They find I had to research real quick. So they go. I, I thought it was Peru or Cuba, something like that. No, they go to Africa. They go, he goes to Africa. In Africa, he's fighting Moreland, right? Moreland is a vampire. So this is now okay. Instead of Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, it could be Spider-Woman. And guess what? She's got a going. Who, who's a vampire that came out already? Morbius. So now she's got to find Morbius to join them. Get to Africa to start this whole thing. That's how you bring Morbius. Morbius doesn't even have to be in the whole movie. He just has to find where he's at and says, "Hey, I need your help," kind of thing. Blah 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 blah. You know, they have their superhero fight. She convinces him because Morbius in the movie was not a villain per se, right? Mm -hmm. He 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 was just trying to figure it out and trying to fight and survive. So he's like an anti-hero. And then he fought someone who stole his powers, who was trying to be a villain, the other guy, and he fought him. So right. So Morbius is just out there to the public. He's perceived as a villain. But he, when the how the movie was, connection. that's a connection right there. You, a connection. Fight a vampire by getting a living vampire. You got a vampire totem. Well, we got a living vampire. Hey, Morbius, I need you to deal with him, and I'll deal with Ezekiel. Yo, that opens up the whole world to being intertwined and connected. Oh my gosh! Okay, like come on now, come on. And 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 this and this is like when I say um, the Amazing Spider-Man with Ezekiel. And I was giving the numbers. I know it sounded low. So this is volume two because, you know, they ran, you know, so Madam Web made her appearance in volume one. They did Amazing Spider-Man volume two. So this is where, you know, for example, Moreland, he shows up in issue number 30. Okay. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I I'm telling you right now, if anyone's out there, I'm just throwing things out there. But tell me, this doesn't sound more interesting than what we saw. If you see Madam Web, Tell me if you, you think my idea is better than the Madam Web movie, or tell me if you think this would be a lot more interesting than what you've seen, or even in the trailers if you haven't seen it. And this is this is what I'm proposing out to people out there. So that's 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 my whole thing. So now this is why I wanted to talk about Madam Web because I figured, like you said, Rod, missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. And Ezekiel is supposed to be in his 50s. This is why yeah. I say, don't see W me, man. Don't, don't, don't see W me. Don't give me someone who's supposed to be in their 50s and make them 20. Don't give me someone who's supposed to be in their 60s and make them 20. Right? No. It's not how we came, Madam Web. It's Madam Web. Even if you show any origin, like her, clearly her origins. Anyway, so that's that's my two cents. So 
if that was the case, mm. and I'm going to fan cast it my way. Mm-hmm. Here, we're going to get down to this point. So we've talked the origin of Adam Webb. I know it didn't seem much, but we got to put some meat on that bone. We talked about the movie. Um, and now we're going to fan cast it. So if we had to fan cast it traditionally, I'm looking for someone, and we're just talking Madam Webb. I'm looking yep. for someone to play Madam Webb that's maybe closer, age appropriate, mm-hmm. who can steal a scene without leaving a chair, has some kind of, you know, delivery. It's got to be impeccable. Someone that you're going to look at and say, okay, I can see this actress playing Madam Webb. I'm interested to see how she does it. And, you know, the actors that are really able to steal a scene, as I said, without leaving a chair. Yeah. I'm going to make it really simple. There's only one person that can do this in my mind. Who's that? For me, that is Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis should have been Madam Webb. Right? Okay. If, if you watched her, her her last couple of movies, uh, I can't remember the name of it now, The that she did with uh, Michelle Yeoh. Where, you know, at one point she's at different universes. She's got the hot dog fingers. Yes, 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 yes. Um, All at once. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So that movie. Now, in that movie, is she trying to play a sex symbol? No. She's not playing the role like she did in True Lies. She's not a sex symbol. Um, You know, she's an annoying boss. But she delivered it with some good heartfelt moments. She delivered it with humor. She, there was action in the movie. Jamie Lee Curtis is it. Now, Jamie Lee Curtis as Madam Webb, you would watch her on screen and go, okay, she holds my interest. She's holding my interest. She, she can sit there and deliver her lines. And, and you look, even in that movie that she did with uh, Michelle Yeoh, right? Um, mm-hmm. that, that She's in a chair at one point, sitting down, just talking. And you're like, oh, I'm all in. Dialogue was good. Jamie Lee Curtis delivered it beautifully. That That's who I would go with as Madam Webb, Jamie Lee Curtis. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis has that whimsical smile. So at one point, she can play the charlatan. She, she, You know she can play the tough woman on top of it, too. She, she can play a person that's struggling because she had to deal with her brother trying to kill her off in every Halloween movie. <laughs> Okay, we could definitely say that too, <laughs> right? So she's got that range. That come on now, Jamie Lee Curtis, come on, you, you, you. okay, yeah, okay, no, no, that's, yeah. that's good, that's good, that's good. Now, um, you brought a point. I didn't, I didn't properly articulate it in my head, but you said a good point. Someone who can basically act from a chair. That's what I took from you. Someone who yeah. can just basically sit there and get your attention. And that's yeah. what, what I wanted. So for my Madam Web, I was yeah. definitely going, like you said, a little bit age appropriate and everything like that. Now, my 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 selection, she's a little bit older. Mm-hmm. She's a little bit older, but she does have the chops. I would like to have Helen Marin, Marin as, as mine. Now, who is that? We're just going to go a couple of places. You would know her. Um, the last latest one was uh, Shazam, a Fury of the Gods, Hesperia. But you would know her more as Queenie from the Fast and Furious. Um, basically, that's um, Shaw's mother. Um, also, if you go with... Um, why? Oh, my gosh. Where was the other one? Hold on. I, I literally... I'll even you help you out on this one because we found out. Help you out, Helen Mirren. Red, yeah, yes, right, red, red too. She plays the sniper in there. I'll even go way back to the beginning of her career, which is one of my favorite medieval movies, uh, fantasy movies. It's called Excalibur. If you watch the first Excalibur movie from back in the days, back in the eighties, where they had the shiny armor, talking about King Arthur and everything like that, Helen mm-hmm. Mirren plays Morgan Le Fay in that movie, and she is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Dead gorgeous and phenomenal. Okay. And I was like, I have that movie on DVD. That's like my favorite. You talk about movies. That's like for fantasy and along those lines with King Arthur. 
Mm-hmm. No movie has beat that movie, in my opinion. Forget all the other King Arthur, movie, uh, King Arthur movies that came out. Nothing has touched that one yet. No, costume wise, and Helen Mirren in that movie, amazing. In Red, amazing. Fast and Furious, amazing. Touche, sir. Ooh, shit. Cause, listen, because because even then, like she's in the Queen and everything like that. So I wanted someone who basically has that. Because at least in the car, in the car, in the cartoon. She's not snobby, but she's very proud. She's very sure of herself. I want someone who can talk to you and just basically feel no way to put you in your place. I can't see you, but I have enough gumption, enough arrogance to say, no, I'm the top dog here. I'm the top person here. I am Madam Webb. Respect my authority. Listen, I just want someone just to sit there and basically she just will radiate, radiate, authority and not even just you know you, you can't see her eyes but you know like i need to toe the line because the next thing i say i may lose my life after that that's the type of vision i i have with her so yeah all right i like that i see helen miriam you know yeah. helen miriam all right and also i said i was going jamie lee curtis uh, those are two actresses right there that 100%. Would play the out of Madam Web, and could I see either actress in a Spider-Man movie making a cameo appearance later on? The answer is yes, 100%. absolutely. Come on now, come on, Sony, Sony. All right, then that that's that. So that's what we wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Madam Web and just bring that to light. And of course, people mm-hmm. might phone at the problems of oh, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. We wanted to go beyond and say, hey, we have a solution. Here's our pick. This is how it could have been. Not too mm-hmm. late to kind of maybe uh, rejig some things. Nothing wrong with a reboot on this one. I don't, don't like reboots, but this one, yeah, you got to do the reboot. Okay, so there no. you go. Rod, any last words? Listen, um, all I can say is this character is interesting. Um, I hope that you like the little um, different perspective that we brought to it. And I really feel that, you know, what Barry is saying, what I've added on and everything like that, that this will actually be a valid a valid IP to actually be seen. And where you say, okay, we can give her a chance and basically making her to be the linchpin throughout the spider universe, to me, it makes sense. She, To me, it makes sense. That's I'll right. leave it at that. Ooh, what a tangled web we weave. Woohoo! that is awesome so once again everyone thank you for tuning in this has been the iconis podcast as we were saying we we're talking about madam web but not only did we identify first we talked about the origin of the story we talked about maybe what we wanted to see and kind of pitch our own ideas on how the movie could have been in our opinion mm-hmm. too late sony uh as i said uh you know so rod you went with helen miram mm-hmm. i went with uh jamie lee curtis jamie lee curtis yep let me know, let us know who you would think could play a proper Madam Web in a proper Madam Web storyline in a live action series. Maybe you have a different take to ours that's maybe better than ours. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Let us know in the comments below. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. This is the Iconis Podcast. And as I always say, this whole world was started by a pencil, a piece of paper, and lots of imagination. Keep on dreaming. Out. Spider-Man. 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 <laughs> Why do we need a remit? Okay, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. All right, enough said. We out. We out.